problem, I'm given a vector field f of x, y, and z and two surfaces m1 and m2. m1 is the circle at z equals 0, centered at the origin with a radius 3, oriented counterclockwise and upwards. And then m2 is this half hemisphere of radius 3, centered at the origin, oriented upwards. And by Stokes' theorem, the flex integrals of the curl over f over these two oriented surfaces are the same. So we want to calculate the common value by calculating whichever flex seems easier. So I have a choice here. I can calculate the line integral of f along m1 or the double integral of the curl of f over the hemisphere. And I should get the same answer both times. Well, I think that I'm going to go with the hemisphere. Let's go ahead and find the curl of f. So to do that, I'm going to use a 3 by 3 matrix and cofactor expansion. So to do the curl, let's think about the cross product of the gradient operator and the fun and the vector field f. So the second column here is going to be the gradient operators. And then the third column is just going to be f. So z sine of x, z e to the y, and x, y, z squared. So let's go ahead and find this gradient, ah, cross product. So to find the i component, I'm going to cut the top row and cut the column with the i in it. So I've got a 2 by 2 matrix here to take the determinant of. So I'm going to go and do that. So I have xz squared minus e to the y as my i component. Now for j, again, I'm going to cut the top row and this time cut the middle column. So I have a kind of weird 2 by 2 matrix, but it's d dx, d dz, z sine of x, and x, y, z squared. So let's go ahead and find that. And keep in mind that the sign alternates. So for j, I'm going to multiply by a negative 1. And then for k, cut the column with the k. And the top row, I have this 2 by 2 matrix. And its determinant is actually just going to be 0. OK. And now I need to find a normal vector. So I can take its dot product with this, and I can integrate. Well, I know I'm oriented upward, so the i and j components of the normal vector are just going to be 0. And then the k component is just going to be 1, pointing straight up. So I need to take that dot product. So I have 0 plus 0 plus 0. So I'm just integrating 0 over m, which gives me 0. So the line integral of f along m1 equals 0, as well as the flux of f through m2.